This video explains how to get the best world maps in Transport Fever 2 for beginners and for a more advanced player. We're going to cover everything you need to know so strap in and let's get going. So you're on the main menu, press free game and then we're brought to this screen. If you're a new player I'd recommend you play on a temperate with a medium sized map, one to one, a medium amount of towns, a medium amount of industries and all of these sliders set to the middle. Then play around with this button and find a C that looks pretty cool for you. For more advanced players, I would recommend that you go to Tropical and I'll show you how you put a special setting on to get the Megalomaniac size, which is huge, which I really recommend for a second playthrough or higher. Okay, so go to this PC, your drive, Steam, user data, 3200, etc. 1066, 780, local, and now we're going to go to settings. Inside of the settings, press Ctrl and F at the same time and search EXPER, press enter and it will come down here, experimental mailbox and just beneath that is experimental map sizes, set that to true and make sure you leave the comma in after as well. While we're here, I'll also quickly cover the dry climate, but I wouldn't recommend this one. It's, it's kind of a middle ground, so if you're not feeling tropical, you think it's too hard, dry is a good place to go if you want something a bit harder than temperate. So for dry, I would recommend that you change the map type to very large, you set canyons to the max, you set messes in the middle, and you set ridges to the max, and then these bottom two water and forest, you set to the first notch right down here. For the towns, go for a high amount of towns, and for the industries, go for a medium amount. You should now have a really tight looking map. If you want to do all types of trains at the same time in the same map, I would recommend you leave it as one to one. But if you want to use planes and you want to use high speed trains especially, change this to one to five. This is what one to five looks like, but we're going to leave it as one to one in this example. Make towns to low make industries to low, then under the generator settings make hilliness the maximum, forest the maximum, and leave mainland and islands somewhere in the middle. You can go one slider to either side generally, like here and here, or the other way around, but generally speaking, you want to leave it in the middle. Then hit refresh a few times on the seed until you find a cool one, or for seed you can type in a special word that has meaning to you. Now press next. Your page is going to look like this for default, but we need to change a lot of settings here because there's a lot we can improve upon. So for both beginners and people who've already done a playthrough of the game, definitely press the custom button, go to settings, advanced settings, vehicles and change this to all. Then press apply. This enables every type of train in the game to be on the save at the same time and it allows for so much more creative freedom. You'll thank me. We'll go back to that settings panel in a second. So I recommend if you're a beginner you set the start year to 1900. It means that the game will go by quicker but it will mean that you start with a lot more vehicles than in the 1850s. Set the difficulty to easy and then towns cargo needs two cargo types, industry closure frequency set to never, and industry density target set to disabled. If you're a more advanced player, change this setting to 1850, medium, up to six cargo types, sometimes, and medium. Now let's go back to the settings tab, and this will open up all your mods. This is where you can enable the deluxe content DLC, and any other DLCs they might have released, as well as the early supporter content, make sure you have those enabled because you get more vehicles. Now here's a really important one. I would recommend that beginner players on their first playthrough do not enable this, they leave it as the default, but for a second playthrough and above, absolutely 100% turn on sandbox mode. It is an essential for this game. And I would also recommend for someone second playthrough or above, the vehicles no NG8, you turn that one as well because it actually gives you a lot more freedom because sometimes a vehicle that is actually going to get removed from your depot at a certain year is more useful than a more modern vehicle and actually does the job much better at making you more money. So sometimes, and you might have seen this on another video I did, I actually used steam trains instead of diesel trains because in that instance they were better. So it's definitely worth checking out the stats of the vehicles when you're in the game. Make sure you've got vehicles no NG8 ticked. Now let's go back to advanced settings and then beginners scroll down a little bit, public transport set to 200, private transport set to 200, cargo supply 200 and all the other settings leave them alone. Now press apply and you can begin your game. Now let's make this world look incredible in one simple step. Press escape, settings and advanced. Now under debug mode enable it. Then press apply. Press alt gr and d at the same time. This menu is going to open. Now press environment and then click on whichever this is. In my case, it's tropical.lua because I'm on the tropical map. And we're going to change this one to Mediterranean. You'll see the world get a little bit brighter, but we're not done yet. At the bottom here, extinction, change this to 0 0.005 and press enter. And now look at this. Wow. Beautiful oceans. 
And this will look insane on every map type, not just tropical. If you want to do some sort of cinematics for YouTube or whatever, I would recommend that you switch from Mediterranean to Blue Clear. It looks really cool. But now you've got this awesome map, what's the best way to transport people around in it? Well, that's why you need to check out this video here, which shows you the best way to do passenger stations in Transport Fever 2. Check it out.